Hey yo, I'm just like my country, I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shots. Welcome back guys, it's me and INFP. This video is going to be about the MBTI types of Hamilton, very well-known musical that is now on Disney+. Plus. This would be the perfect time for me to talk a little bit about their MBTI types, see what you think about them. Here we go. So of course, the first person I'm going to talk about in Hamilton is going to be Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> I would like to sing more, but one, you don't want to hear my awful voice. Two, I'm probably going to get copyrighted for it. I will try to keep the songs to a minimum, but it is a musical, so literally like everything in the play is a song. <laughs> so Alexander Hamilton, the main character, played by Lynn manuel Miranda, who also wrote the play. There have, I've been looking online a little bit about what people think about the MBTI types of Hamilton and the characters in Hamilton, and there's been a little bit of controversy. Not everyone agrees on everyone's types, and that's pretty normal when it comes to fictional characters. They can be a little bit hard to type because sometimes they're not completely consistent because they are written as fictional characters. This comes a little bit into play with Hamilton. For me, every time I see him, he just like jumps out at me as an ENTP. His behavior in the musical, like I can't see him as anything other than an ENTP. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the reasons why I believe that. It's pretty obvious that Hamilton has NE or extroverted intuition as his first function. He is very like, full of ideas, possibilities, like enthusiastic about trying to get them all out. He's always like writing like he's running out of time. He's got to like get all the stuff out that's in his head and he wants to like make things happen from his NE. That's pretty clear. As an ENTP in the musical, he's very impulsive, very um, passionate, energetic, impatient, I guess that's kind of similar to impulsive, and he runs his mouth. <laughs> Despite people telling him it's not the wisest choice, he doesn't care. He's going to say what his beliefs are. And a lot of people think that beliefs come from like FI. So people were trying to say that he had FI because he had opinions and beliefs. And that is not like you can as an ENTP you can have strong beliefs and opinions without FI. As I was studying like Hamilton's motivations a little bit further it almost seemed like he kind of believed in something like outside of himself. Like yes he wants his story to be remembered. He wants to leave a legacy but that ties more into like almost like his Enneagram as like he has some kind of three Enneagram going there where it's all about image like he wants to be in history as someone of significance he wants to leave a legacy and then what he believes in is the movement for the United States to have independence and he believes in that movement is not necessarily about like his internal values it's like he believes in that and he's going to fight for that he's going to try to make that happen. There are examples of ENTPs like having beliefs and wanting to fight for them like Sokka in Avatar The Last Airbender. He strongly believes in the war against the Fire Nation. He's willing to fight for that and he has that goal like that's a belief of his. Yes, he's an ENTP. Yes, he believes in that strongly. Yes, Hamilton also believes in the United States becoming independent and he's willing to fight for that to make it happen. And as the play goes on, he writes a lot. He's also very smart and he's kind of like a smart ass too <laughs> with his words and his behavior. Like he doesn't care. He's going to do like, he will do a rap battle. He will like get in your face and be like, yo buddy, this is how it is. Yes. I feel like he is a more emotional ENTP than a normal one because like it does seem like a lot of his actions are stemmed by his impulses. He has an affair with a married woman 
and he's married. So he doesn't really seem to have a problem with that. It's not really much of a struggle for him. And when people find out, a few of the people in the play find out because he basically tells them, then he writes a whole pamphlet. And his choice to do that, it was like, I don't see any really morals going on there. Because like why he wrote the pamphlet detailing this affair was because he didn't want his image to look bad. And because like they were accusing him of something else unrelated to that. And to clear his name of that, he wrote this. Like he didn't necessarily seem to care that much about the consequences, his poor wife. Like he was just thinking about like people are not going to have like a bad image and think this thing of me. So I'm going to tell him this thing and this will clear my name. And like that definitely seems like it's not coming from like internal values, but is more of like a logical thing. Uh, Because of his FE, he does still care what people think of him. And like not enough to shut up about what he believes in, but like he doesn't want his legacy and reputation tarnished in a way that's like gonna affect his like political career, I guess. A lot of his songs just like kind of like smack of ENTP, even with his interactions with like the Skylar sisters and him being like a really charming dude, but like he doesn't have a problem switching out sisters because he wants to social climb basically and it's kind of unclear like I get enough that he cares about Eliza his wife but I'm not sure if he actually loves her or not maybe by the end but like I'm still not like 100% clear on that yeah like because he basically married her because she was like a nice chick and she was from like a prestigious family that he wanted to join. So he basically wooed her with his charms and his eloquence, like he writes her letters, like his strength is like through words, writing, talking, and he like inspires people with his words because he's very good at speaking. Hopefully that made sense. That's Alexander Hamilton. Uh, To me, like he seems like the clearest MBTI type that stands out to me. A contrast to Alexander Hamilton is Aaron Burr. He is his, like, frenemy through the musical. And it's actually kind of hard to pinpoint his type because for some reason, a lot of people think he's INTJ. And I just don't see that. I could possibly see him being, like, a thinker, but, like, the functions of INTJ, like, I'm not really seeing in Burr because... Burr is infamous in the musical for not showing his beliefs and opinions. The reason why he does this, I believe, is because he has high FE, which makes him a people pleaser and someone who wants to be a chameleon in the political world, and he prefers to wait for it, (laughs) wait for it, (laughs) rather than like be very blunt and in people's faces like Hamilton. Like, he tells Hamilton, talk less, smile more, don't let people know what you're rooting for and what you're not rooting for. And he likes to, like, see which way the wind blows, see how things are going before he decides which side he's going to say he's on. Like, he ends up switching political parties just because he was able to, like, win an election that way. So he, like, I don't see FI at all. He has no really personal values. It's just like he's willing to change himself to become whatever is going to get him what he wants, basically. So that's why I kind of see him as like maybe like an ISFJ or an INFJ. Like I can see people's arguments for like NI because he does seem very like in the long goal, in for the long run, and he's just going to wait it out until... He feels like things are going, like, in the way he wants them to, and then he's gonna, like, ride on that. But then SI is kind of like, I could see them being an observer as well. A more of, like, taking 
past patterns and things and building it up to like what's gonna work so i'm not exactly sure but like that makes the most sense to me that he's either infj or isfj because to me he definitely has fe and that's the reason why he doesn't show his opinions or beliefs you know he doesn't stand for anything unless he's sure it's going to be the right decision even stuff that he like in secret says like yeah i actually agree with this but i'm not going to come out saying i agree with this because like what if i'm backing the wrong horse and him and hamilton clash a lot because they're the opposites in that way and like that's why it might also make sense that he's like an isfj or infj because of like duality chemistry kind of thing he has going on with hamilton like hamilton declares his beliefs and opinions stands behind them makes them publicly known burr's the opposite and burr thinks hamilton's being rash hamilton thinks burr is being like a um a pussy basically he actually gets really frustrated with burr because he's like what are you gonna stand for like what are you waiting for you gotta like come out with what you believe and fight for it. It's not resolved in the best way, the freneminess between them. Someone pointed out that a possible reason of why it didn't go well when Burr finally decided to act in the moment during his duel with Hamilton is because like he might have inferior SE. I don't know about that, but like that's another possible explanation. Burr actually gets really jealous of Hamilton because they kind of start out on the same level and for some reason, he can't figure out why Hamilton is, like, rising to the top and becoming more successful than he is. And that makes him really angry. Next will be Eliza Schuyler slash Hamilton. Hamilton's wife, Schuyler's sister. She is one awesome woman. The last time I watched Hamilton, I actually cried at the end because I was like, she is so awesome. <laughs> and I'm also torn between her type as well. Because, like, I don't see functions standing out to me, and that's what makes me hesitate to type people. I could see her as either an ISFJ or an INFP. ISFJ was honestly my first thought, but it's honestly a really hard call. She is, like, known as, like, the sweet, kind, like, if you hurt her, you're kicking a puppy type of person. She is an Enneagram 2. So she's kind of like the cheerleader and supporter for Hamilton. She's always like behind him and like encouraging him and stuff. Although I don't feel like she fully understands him. She wishes he would spend more time with her because he's always busy off like doing stuff for his goals. That's another reason why I think he's like, he's any dominant because it's like people aren't necessarily his first priority. It's like his projects and stuff like that. Like his ideas and stuff like that's his top priority and then people come and he is concerned with his legacy his writing his political career and she's like can't you like spend time with me your wife like your family like what well, isn't that enough and it's not enough for hamilton because he's never satisfied <laughs> i'm just like dropping name like music titles all over the place even even then though she's still behind him and she kind of like fell in love with him at first sight and it was pretty easy for him to charm her and actually like Helpless is one of my favorite songs because like I feel like if I was in Hamilton I would play Eliza because I like I feel her you know what I mean <laughs> like I feel like that that's the type of personality that like I could see myself playing so yeah she's known as like you know the dedicated wife until like the affair thing then she sings a song called Burn, where she's basically like, you broke my heart and screw you. I'm burning your letters and no one's going to know, like, how I react to this and, like, you know, how we were together and stuff. Like, people have said they could say that as an F.I. song rather than, like, S.I.F.E. song. Like, I would be fine with her being any, like, either of those, ISFJ or INFP. I feel like I'm leaning towards ISFJ. I actually feel like I tend to relate to ISFJ female characters in a lot of shows just because like the way they're portrayed can be confused with INFP. Like I feel like we have similarities there, especially in anime for some reason, but typically like 
the female characters who are like unbelievably sweet and just like so good like they usually end up being ISFJs like <laughs> in all honesty <laughs> That's my gut. Like, I would be happy if she was an INFP, but like, I'm leaning a little bit towards ISFJ right now. Like, I feel like she was just so like unbelievably like awesome in the musical because like, despite all she's been through, all Hamilton put her through, he cheated on her and told the whole world because of the way he handled it, their son got killed and like wrecked their lives. And then she ends, she still forgives him. And then when he passes away, she ends up like being the person to write his story. She carries on his legacy. She does all this awesome stuff. She like forms the first like orphanage in New York or something. Yeah, she like did a whole lot with her life. I think she's a great character. Then there's her sister, Angelica Schuyler. Obviously, she's kind of like very similar to Hamilton in some ways. She also becomes instantly attracted to him when they meet because he's like a flirt and charming. She's also very witty. Like I feel like they're intellectually on the same level and they can kind of get each other because like neither one of them are satisfied. She doesn't really make decisions with feeling because like when she meets him like very quickly she realizes a bunch of things about why it wouldn't work out for her to have a relationship with him also why he wants a relationship with them including like he's poor and he he wants to marry them because of their family and stuff like that but she also like gives him up because of her sister like you see a lot of her sacrificing for her sister who was eliza in the musical and I believe she may be ENFJ, who can still be logical, even if she's a feeler. Like, some people have said, like, she's such a healthy ENFJ that, like, her dominant FE gets confused for TE. That's the type I'm going with for her. She gives Hamilton up because she knows her sister loves him and that her sister's the nicest person in the world and she wouldn't get over it if, you know, if she, Angelica took Hamilton instead. And then, like, later on, like, you can see her always, like, supporting Eliza. She kind of always knew what Hamilton was. That he wasn't, like, the greatest guy, to be honest. Like, when it came to, like, relationships. Like, I feel like Eliza has such, like... She's probably the type of person who just, like, sees good in everyone. But Angelica was like, yeah, I know what you are, boy. She kind of still always had this weird, like, flirtation thing going on with Hamilton everyone was fine with it apparently like even after Eliza was married but anyway like she is ambitious but she's also practical and like she does what she has to do she knows she has to marry into like she has to marry a wealthy husband and she does uh for the sake of like her family and her song satisfied is kind of like an fe song because it's about like basically what I told you her story of having to like sacrifice what she wants for her sister's sake. George Washington is probably ISTJ. He's a very like straight shooter, honest guy. He ends up like retiring so he can be in his plantation and just like chill. Yeah, that's really all I have to say about that. The other characters, I'm sorry if your other characters were maybe like a favorite of yours because to be honest, they all kind of blended together to me and like, like I don't feel like enough of their personality came through to be able to type them accurately. There's like Lafayette, like Lawrence, like Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson is probably an ESFP, like the way he acted, but like several of like, kind of like the more minor characters, I'm not really sure like, I would have to like study them a lot more to be able to like get a read off their personality. Philip Hamilton is probably an ESFP. He's like his father in a lot of ways, but he's also like really impulsive and charming. Honestly, I like to watch the play again just to focus on MBTI the entire time, which is no easy feat since it's over two hours. I've watched the play three times, once in person, once on YouTube and then once on Disney Plus. But I still feel like 
the last time I watched it, there was, like, a lot of stuff that, like, not a lot, but there was, like, several things that, like, I didn't remember from, like, a previous time I watched it. So I feel like every time you watch it, like, you see something you didn't realize before. And to be honest, I wasn't concentrating on, like, typing them the times I was watching it. So, like, the only type that I was really popping out at me was Hamilton because he's the main character and I was just seeing ENTP in him. It can be a little bit hard to type them because the whole play is a musical and all their behaviors and actions are through song. And last but not least, there is King George III, who is too awesome to type. <laughs> awesome. Wow. <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt that. He's basically like your psychotic ex-boyfriend who doesn't want you to break up with him and is like, I love you. Get back together with me or I'll kill your family. <laughs> so yeah, that's a little thoughts and insights about the cast of Hamilton. Like this video if you've watched Hamilton. Please comment your thoughts below. Gently press the subscribe button. Take care of yourselves. See ya. You'll be back. Soon you'll see. You'll remember you belong to me. You'll be back. Time will tell. You'll remember that I served you well.